guys, what's going on? Thank you for watching today. We are finally back in Pine Mountain Sanctuary and today we're building for the giant pandas. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys, if you are enjoying this series, enjoying the content, go ahead and leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section what you think, what animal you'd like to see next, or just a random animal fact. I love hearing from you guys, but all of that engagement on the videos really does help support the channel and I really appreciate it. So getting into the build, as I mentioned, we are building for the giant pandas in Pine Mountain Sanctuary. And if you're new here, this is episode, uh oh, <laughs> this is episode eight, nine. Oh, we are so bad at this. So this is a collaborative effort zoo between myself, Zoof, Estan Wolf, and Beyond Drew TV. And we're having so much fun building, but we are terrible at remembering what episode is what. Uh, I sat down to record this voiceover and I didn't even think to check and see what number we were even on. Uh, so apologies, the title will be correct because after this voiceover, I will go back and, uh, and look and make sure that I'm correct. But anyway, that is beside the point. This is episode whatever, and we're building for the giant pandas. So this episode uh, that you're watching here, we did actually begin building this on stream. And for those of you guys that are new to the channel, we do typically stream every Sunday morning. Uh, usually it was at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but I am changing it to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time except for this coming weekend. Unfortunately, I am stuck working again this coming Sunday and I will be unable to stream, but after that, we should be back to our regularly scheduled program. So if you guys have questions on Planet Zoo or just wanna check out content or chat with me live, feel free to stop by. Always love talking with you guys, but yeah, it won't be this weekend, it will be next weekend. We should be back on our regularly scheduled program. But we started building this on stream and so all of the basically what you're seeing here rock placing stuff was all done on stream because apparently placing rocks is my favorite thing to do live while I'm talking to you guys it's just kind of an easy sort of mundane task it's easy to carry on a conversation while placing rocks and things because you don't have to get them super precise uh, for it to look right and if you notice here I am using a combination of both the aquatic rocks some of the natural colored rocks and then as well as some of the like fake log pieces that kind of look like rocks when you turn them upside down. I end up shifting and moving some of these pieces around. You'll see here, we're gonna kind of go through and, and make the variation a little bit more because it was getting a little bit too samesy, a little bit too tiley for me. But I'm really happy with how the overall result uh, came together. We end up utilizing this kind of wall structure that I put together on the back wall as well as the entire front as you're seeing here. I was, as always, working off of a reference picture, and the reference picture that I was using was a pretty natural looking habitat in that it really didn't have too much going on with it other than these kind of retaining wall type structures where you could very clearly see they were man-made out of stone. The reference picture that I was looking was more out of, um, uh, like more kind of refined stone, almost like bricks, kind of, not, not bricks, but you know what I mean? Like cut and like polished stone, I guess. I'm such a terrible descriptive person, but anyway, you get my point. It was less kind of rugged and natural looking, um, more kind of man-made, but I wanted this to kind of fit in as though like Pine Mountain Sanctuary is supposed to be in the Pacific Northwest and it's supposed to be like a nature preserve or national forest land. And so I kind of wanted it to seem like they didn't do too much and more so built the habitat amongst these rocks that were already there uh, and making it work with the terrain and kind of the, the setup that was already there rather than making this super intense man-made habitat. Uh, so that was kind of the goal, but it ends up being pretty simple with just kind of some open areas for the pandas to run around. I stole some climbing frames and kind of altered them a little bit from what Zoof did because in the last episode, if you did catch it, Zoof built our red panda habitat, which is directly next to this off to the right hand side. And so I wanted to make it look like these two habitats probably were made at the same time that the animals were made uh, 
the animals were made at the same time. The animal habitats were made at the same time. And so they're gonna have a lot of characteristics that are similar with one another. You can see there I'm stealing some of the stones, the, the rocks that we've used all throughout the park already and just kind of tying it in. And it was at this point which I realized that using some of these natural rocks uh, is gonna make the build look that much better. It was looking a little bit too too fake with the aquatic rocks and that's something that I'm struggling with right now is that the aquatic rocks I absolutely I love them I love using them they're flexi colored you can kind of uh, mix and match and make them work for whatever project you are working on but I find that using them and them alone or in this case them and the fake log piece it was looking a little bit too fake and I wanted to bring it back to looking a little bit more natural so mixing in these natural rocks really helped helped achieve that. And then of course I wanted to make it look like it was backed by like a rocky cliff um, and make it look more like a natural barrier where the pandas weren't going to be able to climb out. Um, we do end up putting a fence on top of the hill in the background, more so just for like a backdrop and just for, you know, we would actually want an, a real barrier just in case one of the pandas decided to climb up or try to climb up. Um, they don't in game, they can't escape this habitat, but we wanted to make it look Look like if they had or make the guests actually see that they are all contained. My goodness, you guys, I have to go off on a little tangent for just a second. This week has been one of the toughest weeks I have had in a long time, simply just for being busy, for being a little stressed out uh, with work and life and just normal stuff. Everything is okay, but I gotta tell you, I, I have like four videos that are pretty much recorded and just waiting for the voiceover for me to kind of, you know, get myself in gear and get them out. So I have to apologize for a little bit of the lag in content recently, but as I mentioned, this week was was pretty, pretty stinking rough. And I kind of allowed myself a couple days to be a bump on the log. I kind of came home Monday and Tuesday after work and I, I'm not joking, I literally did nothing. I came home, I let my dogs out to go to the bathroom and obviously fed them and did all of their care and everything because that's something that I can't just, you know, sorry dogs, I'm tired, you don't get fed today. That, that doesn't exist, that doesn't happen. So I did that, but other than that, I just sat on the couch. I put on my comfiest pants, my biggest slouchiest t-shirt and just, just sat and I like ordered dinner and I just was lazy as hell and it felt so good <laughs> it felt so good when you're so stressed out and tired like that and just kind of forcing myself to decide that I was not going to worry about anything when I came home from work and just allowed myself to have those two days to just be basically be useless and just do nothing. Matt is such a good sport. He is such, such a supportive person and he kind of helped in that, you know, doing household stuff and, and, and stuff like that for me. Um, but anyway, now I'm back and this is the first time sitting at my computer in five days. It's one of the longest breaks I've taken from playing video games or being at my computer in a really long time and it's due to nothing else besides being just busy and not having the time. So definitely not the lack of wanting to, just the lack of having time. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of go off on that tangent and let you guys know where I had been and see, do you guys have days like that? Do you have weeks like that where you, I mean, just you have to give up on the world for a couple days and allow yourself to to be to be lazy and just relax. And I ordered uh, new candles because uh, scent is something that really helps me relax. So I was burning candles and smelling the good smelling, uh, smelling the good smelling, wow. <laughs> smelling the good scents from those candles and helping me relax. Um, but yeah, anyways, let me know. Let me know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can relate. Hopefully uh, you guys aren't gonna tell me that I am just lazy and I, <laughs> I shouldn't take two days to just do nothing. But um, anyway, going ahead back to the build. Why don't we talk about uh, talk about our giant panda friends? Because I find them shocker. I find them fascinating because I find all animals fascinating. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is their colors. So pandas obviously are very iconically black and white. They have really uh, noticeable or, or recognizable patterns on them. 
So as always, I have the San Diego Zoo website up and we're just gonna read about them a little bit. So scientists aren't exactly sure where the colors actually come from. One theory is that pandas developed the contrasting black and white colors over time so that they would stand out in the forest and be able to find one another in order to mate. Another idea is that the broad blockings of contrasting color, so the black and white, may serve as camouflage to the panda in their bamboo or treetop habitat. Anyone who's tried to spot one of our panda cubs up in the tree napping can verify just how difficult locating them can be. Scientists have yet to confirm what the real purpose of the panda's coloration is, however. Each panda has markings that are slightly different from another panda, so no two pandas are exactly the same. There's also a rare brown and white variation of the giant panda. So it's a little bit about their colors. I have personally been to the San Diego Zoo when they've had baby pandas out on exhibit and they are the, they're the cutest things, not just because they physically look cute, but they are like super clumsy, just adorable little walking teddy bears, essentially. And that leads me into the uh, next little topic on the panda information is that are giant pandas actually bears? For years, scientists have wondered whether pandas are a type of bear or raccoon or something all their own. Through intensive studying of their genetic code uh, in the panda's cells, scientists have confirmed that pandas are related to bears. Giant pandas are similar to other bears in that uh, their general looks, the way they walk and climb, their skull characteristics, and importantly, their social system and reproductive biology. It's necessary to know that pandas are bears because the more we know about pandas, the better we can help them reproduce and survive. So I think that's really cool. So it's not like a koala bear situation. Giant pandas, panda bears are actually bears. So they are related to one another. The next section goes on to say that pandas are arguably the most vocal of all bears. One of the most distinctive of the pandas vocalizations is the bleat. This sounds similar to the sound of a lamb or a goat kid uh, that would make towards its mother and is a friendly sound and greeting. Pandas don't roar the way you think a brown bear would roar or a grizzly bear would roar. Other vocalizations include honks, huffs, barks, and growls. Young cubs are known to croak and squeal. I like that they uh, describe one of their noises as a honk. <laughs> I just imagine them kind of honking, kind of like a goose or a flamingo. I know that's not what they do, but when I hear the word honk, that's like what comes to mind. Anyway, I think that that is super cute. The honks, the huffs, the barks. <laughs> there are uh, other ways pandas communicate as well. Both pandas, uh, male and female pandas, have a scent gland underneath their short tail that secretes a waxy substance used to leave scent marks. Panda scent marks trees, rocks, bamboo, and bushes. The scent is pretty strong. Human noses can smell the stinky, waxy scent mark from about a foot away, but pandas are more sensitive to the smell, so to them it's even stronger. We've discovered that that scent marked trees or rocks can serve as a community bulletin board and notify pandas in the area what other pandas have been there and how long ago they left their scent mark. Another panda can detect the sex, age, reproductive conditions, social status, and even individually identify the scent marker as well as how long that scent has been there. And moving on to talk a little bit more about their actual habitat, giant pandas live in the mountains of southwestern China in damp, misty forests, mostly at elevations between 4,000 and 11,000 feet. Uh, it's about 1,200 or 3,500 uh, meters above sea level. They need old growth conifer forests with at least two types of bamboo and water access. These old growth forests provide old hollow logs and tree stumps that are large enough for pandas to make their dens in. 
pandas stay in their home range that's usually between three to seven square miles. In areas where food isn't plentiful, the home range might be a bit larger. As we can imagine, they're probably going out and looking for said food. Like other bears, pandas spend most of their day eating and sleeping. And speaking of food, bamboo is the most important plant for giant pandas, which I am sure you guys are familiar with if you're familiar with pandas at all, which is also why, as you can see in the video now, even though this is a Pacific Northwest zoo, I did sneak in a couple bamboo plants in their habitat to mimic that in what they would actually need. So imagining that, yes, this zoo is really utilizing the land to make these habitats and not change too much, but thinking that they probably planted some bamboo plants to have in the panda's habitat to make it seem a little bit more natural for them. So that's why I kind of snuck in some bamboo plants here and there. You can either imagine that they're actual bamboos uh, plants that are planted in the ground or that they're just clippings and cuttings that the keepers throw in there. I like to think that they're actual uh, bamboo that was planted in the habitat for the pandas. But anyway, bamboo is the most important plant for the giant pandas. They spend at least 12 hours each day eating bamboo. Can you imagine eating for half of your day? 12 hours is half of your day <laughs> just spent eating eating. That's insane. Because bamboo is so low in nutrients, pandas eat a lot of it daily. They grasp bamboo stalks using their five digits and a special bone that extends from their wrist called a pseudothumb. This little pseudothumb holds and manipulates the bamboo almost as well as your thumb does. Pandas use their teeth to peel off the tough outer layers to reveal the soft inner tissue of the stalk. Strong jaw bones and cheek muscles help pandas crush and chew the thick stalks with their flattened back teeth. Bamboo leaves are also on the menu as pandas strip them off the stalks, wad them up, and eat them. <laughs> Giant pandas have also been known to eat grasses, bulbs, fruit, some insects, and even rodents on occasion. Pretty much whatever they can find. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about uh, pandas. I think they are absolutely adorably cute, super fascinating little animals, and I love going to see them at the San Diego Zoo. Unfortunately, they're not on exhibit all the time, um, or if we even have them, um, because I, I think aren't all giant pandas are owned by China and we have to lease them here. I believe that's how it works. Um, or, you know, we, we pay a certain fee in order to have them uh, here at our zoo in our breeding program and things. I'm not super familiar with it, but I think there's something like that um, because they are native to China. Um, but anyway, I think they're really cute animals. So I was really excited to bring them in to Pine Mountain Sanctuary because again, Zoof built the red panda habitat last episode. And so I thought it went really well because we want to bring in all of the bear species to Pine Mountain Sanctuary that it was only fitting that the giant pandas be next to the red pandas. We talked about it, I think a little bit on stream or maybe in the last episode of Tully Zoo, I can't remember, but talking about how zoos in real life will often group similar um, animals together, not necessarily by region, but by care requirements. So they'll have, you know, some carnivores all together, or they'll have the hoof stock all together, or uh, reptiles all together, stuff like that, because the, the animals that have similar care are going to be kept in certain areas so that they have all the things that they need in that vicinity in order to care for those animals. So having the giant pandas next to the red pandas makes a lot of sense for that reason. Um, you can see, as I mentioned before, I took that little house over from what Zoof built and kind kind of uh, tweaked it a little bit to fit in with the giant pandas. Uh, and now I'm just working on the backdrop. We are pretty much almost done. Um, all we have left to do is a lot more trees and just a teeny tiny bit of guest work. Um, I don't actually do a whole lot of guest work on this one because I wanted to keep it pretty natural and pretty, not plain, but just 
kind of naturey, I guess, uh, is the the thought behind that. The last thing that I do end up doing, actually, now that I have I've remembered it, it's come to my mind, is doing a planter in front of this fence. Looking at it, it did look just a little bit too plain for my liking. So I end up taking this fence that Zoof built before, and these rocks and a lot of trees, and bringing those over to the front of the habitat to just add a little bit more greenery in front uh, to give it a little bit more more of that natural feeling, but also just interest when you're looking at the habitat. And that way it just doesn't look like a wall of stone. Um, I do end up using the same what is it called? The information panel, information stand uh, thing that was made before bringing that over, just trying to pull some elements to make it look like a cohesive zoo because I am building with other builders, obviously, and I want to make sure that our builds are feeling cohesive and then it's feeling like an actual zoo project and not like we've just copy and pasted or plastered little sticker pieces all over a zoo that don't really kind of blend together and mesh well. I think that's one thing that I really am liking about Pine mountain sanctuary is that i do feel like we've done a really good job at uh pulling all of those things together and playing off of one another's build so i'm really really enjoying it and unfortunately we are getting to the very end of the video so that's all the information i have time to go over with you guys right now but if you have other fun giant panda facts please do leave those down below i would love to know what you know about pandas and we can help each other learn about them. So without anything else to say, any further talking, I guess. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and all the comments, all the likes, and we are actually 25 subscribers away from 9,000. I can't believe it, 9,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already and you wanna help us get to that 9,000 subscriber mark, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the end cinematics and until next time, I will talk at you guys in the next video. Bye.